half an hour. I, I'm not sure how deep I can go into this topic, but I will do my best. Uh, just a show of hands to start with. Who has heard of non-duality before? Okay, okay great. Um, for those that don't know, it's simply being aware of being aware. So it's, it's knowing that right here and right now, we, we are. <laughs> And, and that being is, is effortless. We don't need to do anything to be aware. Um, and once we start exploring the spaciousness of awareness itself, the qualities that it has, then slowly we begin to, to realize that it is who we are. And I'll, I'll do a short meditation here to start with. Then I will explain a bit more about my own journey and how I got to where I am now. And then there will be time for questions and answers, if you have any. Um, so, I think we can just start with a meditation. Make yourselves comfortable. Breathe in. And on the exhale, you can close your eyes. simply notice that in the current experience there are some sensations in the body, there are some sounds, there are some thoughts going through the mind. There's the sensation of sitting on a chair and the feet on the floor. There's the experience of the breath in and out. But notice also that in language you would say I am aware of the breath. I am aware of and the sounds, I am aware of the body, I am aware of the thoughts. So this I am or I am aware comes before each experience. It is there during each experience and it is there after each experience. sound, for example, awareness itself does not change by the sound. It is constant. <coughs> So instead of looking towards the objects of awareness, we can look to awareness itself. For example, is there anything that awareness says no to? Or is it all accepting? That is why I like to call it the loving space of awareness because it's, it's one with all things and yet untouched, unchanged by them. Can we have an experience without awareness? And if the answer here is no, then isn't awareness all encompassing? If 
awareness is the first fact of experience. In other words, it is who we are. Then, can awareness become better or improve in some way? Can it be more than it is? Another name for this spaciousness of no seeking, not wanting anything to change to be better or somehow improved is happiness. As such, this happiness or peace is who we are and there's nothing to do to get to who we are. There is nothing outside of you, awareness. And this simple experience of being that we now have, and always have, is what all the spiritual and religious traditions point to so simple and so natural, so intimate, that it is easy to forget that happiness is who we are. That acceptance is effortless. This is also the experience of non-duality, or not to. Let's take three deeper breaths here. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And try and maintain the, this awareness of awareness of being. So to say a bit more about me, um, I grew up in, in four different countries, in France, in Belgium, Bulgaria, and for the last nine years here in the UK. And this is really interesting because I kept traveling, especially from Belgium to Bulgaria. And in French, I had one personality. In Bulgarian, I had another personality. In Bulgarian, I was very rough and kind of not caring and <laughs> a bit gangster. And in French, I, uh, I was more 
studious and very careful, just different. And then I came here, and a third personality started forming in English. So I naturally asked myself the question, out of all of these personalities, who, who am I? Um, and the way it was triggered, this question, was through shyness. So I was suddenly very shy and I couldn't really connect to people. And then it, it spread to even conversations with my family. And what helped me at the time was neurolinguistic programming. I don't know if some of you are familiar with it. Um, and I started noticing how the mind creates feelings and how it's not the, the circumstances in the world that create how I feel, but I can trigger them through memory, and that kind of thing. And then, because I was so fascinated with this exploration, I went into mindfulness and meditation, and I started noticing the patterns that I had um, learned from family members, conditioning, schools, uh, friends, etc. And I discovered that, that I have this ability to change um, what I believe. So it's not necessary to, to keep holding on to a belief. But I was still seeking, I was still trying to, to, to be better, to improve, to somehow change the current situation. And then after a lot of ex other exploration through A Course in Miracles and Way of Mastery, I got to non-duality. And to me, non-duality is really the final understanding. It's, it's the knowing that who I am fundamentally is not the mind-body, it's not the belief, it's not, a, it's not just a personality, it's, it's awareness itself, it's all-encompassing. There's no, there's no distance between me and, and experience, that's just imagined. Um, and it was just so curious to, to explore experience and really try and find this boundary that, that seemed to be there between sounds between people, between my body and, and other things like this. And so slowly I, I got to this understanding that who I am is happiness. There's no way to, to reach it. It's not an object, it's not uh, a practice, cannot really get us to a, a better place. Um, because who we are is so as I said in the meditation, so intimate, so natural, that we are already here now. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I do now is I, I guide people on their own spiritual journey through one-to-one -one sessions and online programs, and talks like this one. Um, and I help them explore non-duality and their actual experience of what is true here now. What can we be what can we be certain of? What can we be really confident in? And slowly this understanding, this recognition, I am awareness, is just the first stage. Afterwards, there's the, the realigning of the mind and body. That's the realigning of all beliefs with what is actually true. And, and that is a, an everlasting process. It just keeps going. Right? And it's uh, reflected in our relationships. Because suddenly we're not afraid, we, we don't protect this personality or this body. And so we can love unconditionally, we can give unconditionally. Once I know myself as infinite and eternal, what is there to not give? What is there to, to hide? So I, I think that's a good enough introduction to the topic. Um, if you have any questions about anything during the meditation or after, then feel free to ask. On your journey, when did you feel that you wanted to start guiding others and why? I wanted to start what? Guiding others. 
Um, I think I felt it since the NLP days. <laughs> Just because I saw that a lot of my friends and most people I met were following their conditioning. And suddenly when I saw that my beliefs are can change, that was the first instant where I was like, wait, everyone needs to know this. So I, I already started sharing this then. Um, but in, in those days there was still a sense of, I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there, there was still, still a sense of, I am seeking, but it feels like I'm seeking less than before, so I can still share with others. Whereas now I'm certain. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So we had like the initial deal with the non dual aspect. Mm -hmm. But then really then I can really experience it when I'm on a cushion or really focusing hard on that. How do you bring it into your everyday life? I find I'm aware of what it is, but I find it very hard to bring it into like working life. I think it's this, um, there's, there's often a misinterpretation of what meditation is in, in our society. So often it's, it's just taking 10 or 20 minutes away from, from work or the day and then going back into it. Whereas when, when you see that who you are is awareness itself, so meditation is often about kind of moving away from the objects of the world and simply being and then once we go back there's, there's a sort of veiling of forgetting that happens of who we really are um, and I, I think the more so at first it's, it's a process the more you, you, you keep going back to this beingness the more it will also drive you towards itself so it goes from being the background of experience to being the foreground of experience. And, and also, uh, uh, later stages, um, so first the awareness is somehow separate from the world, and then when, when you go towards the objects of attention, they become known as awareness itself. And so then there's, there's nothing, every sound, every person, every experience is a reminder of your true nature. So particular moments of like meditation for you that, that you have during the day, I've heard that you just like use particular moments and like bring it to the fore to punctuate every the day with certain moments of like meditation. Is that? Um, I used to. Yeah. Um, but now I know there's, there's a phrase that I really like, which is meditation is not something we do; it's who we are. Mm. And so. There's nothing to do to get to who we are. <laughs> Does anyone have any more questions? Do you ever stop seeking? Do I ever stop seeking? I'm not seeking in the first place. <laughs> so you said you were. Well, I, I was. Um, so, yeah. That's a good question. The interesting thing, and what's different from non-duality with other spiritual traditions, is that often there's a big emphasis on so-called enlightenment. So this is the stage where a mind, seemingly, realizes its own nature. Um, but then the thoughts that come in that mind are, now I am enlightened, now I know. And, and so that again creates separation. So the, the first, um, the self that is looking to find itself is not awareness. Awareness itself will never seeks and has never sought anything. So who I identified with, the my body with my conditioning and the three languages and whatever, 
was constantly seeking. But in the background, awareness never saw. And it's once the yes, once I know myself as awareness, I can recognize that. So I propose now to tell you a bit more about what, what I do here, and then maybe we can finish with another short meditation. Um, so here I'm at stand T15, um, and I do five minute sessions. If you have particular questions or challenges or issues that you are you you want to ask, and. Um, if you subscribe to my newsletter, I can give you a 20% discount on the first session. Um, yeah. So you're welcome to come along and, and, and see me at my stand. Um, and I'll have flyers at the end of the talk if you want to know more about what I do, check out my website and how every area of our life can be aligned with this understanding. So on my websites, there's a teaching section, and uh, I talk about relationships, other practices, the body, the mind, like uh, every aspect of life aligned with non duality. Great. So let's do another short meditation. So. And breathe in, and on the exhale, you can. Meditation itself is a universal yes to everything. Because we recognize in meditation that I am here now, no matter where, when or what happens in this so-called outside world, we can always recognize this. I am here now. So many of us are trying to find stability in the experiences. We're trying to find a relationship that lasts forever and fulfills us on every level. We try to find a job that is stable, that we like, that we love. We try and make the mind more positive. We try and make the body more healthy. And all of these things are great and, and necessary to some degree. But they cannot give us happiness. They cannot tell us anything about who we are. Who we are 
realize pure acceptance and love. And that cannot be found in any object. is changeless and that cannot be found in any object of experience. The who we are is now and objects of experience come and go. your trust in what is real, constant, and worthy of your trust. And be, know, and love. Only awareness itself. 